This video will provide an overview of how to install the VoIP Detective appliance on a VMware ESXi installation. At a high level, you're going to download the VMware OVA, which is the virtual appliance. You're going to deploy it onto your VMware ESXi installation. Then you're going to configure the VoIP Detective Appliance to use a static IP address. And finally, we'll walk through the VoIP Detective GUI and make sure that the installation is complete. Let's get started. To begin, go to VoIPDetective.com. You'll see an Install VoIP Detective for Free Now button in the upper right hand corner. So we click on this. At this point, we don't yet have an account, so let's register for an account with VoIP Detective. We're going to put in our email address, our password, and at this point, we're just picking passwords. First name. Once we've filled this out, we'll hit register. All right, so we have an account. And at this point, we're on the download page. So we can see the system requirements. At this point, we can either move forward with VoIP Detective Free, or we could purchase VoIP Detective Pro. Since we're just trying this out, let's go with VoIP Detective Free. I'm going to generate a license. All right, so I have a license key. I'm going to take this, I'm going to write this license key down. We'll need this for when we're installing the product. Now, at this point, we're going to choose if we're installing VoIP Detective on VMware or if we're installing it on Hyper-V. My environment runs on VMware, so I'm going to choose the VMware download. Save this to my local computer. All right, so that's downloading in the background. And finally, we've got a couple of different sets of instructions. Uh, if we're going to use ESXi, if we're going to use VMware Workstation or Player, or if we'd gone with the Hyper-V. Uh, so if you click one of these, it's going to open up a new pane, new panel, and provide with instructions. At this point, let's go ahead and open up the instructions at the bottom of the download page. As I mentioned, my environment's ESXi, so I'm going to open up these instructions. OK. And we can see that we have done number one, we've requested a free license. And we've done number two, we've downloaded the VoIP Detective OVA. So let's go ahead and deploy this. My particular environment is managed by a vCenter server. So I've logged into vCenter and I'm going to deploy an OVF template. Browse for the local file. Give it a title. Right, I'm going to thin provision it. And that's it. It's currently deploying.
VoIP Detective is finished installing, so let's go ahead and power the virtual machine on. Should take just a few moments for it to boot up. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and launch the console. All right, so let's go ahead and log in with the CLI admin login. And the password is VoIP, V-O-I-P. And again, these credentials can be found in your installation instructions. So at this point, what I'd like to do is set a static IP address for this virtual machine. So to do that, I simply choose number two to change network settings and I press one to launch the network configuration. We're going to edit a connection. All right, so I'd like to change this, the IPv4 configuration from automatic to manual. And then we're going to choose show. I'm going to add an IP address, 192. 68. Oh. And you have to remember to put the subnet mask at the end. Uh, this is also outlined in the instructions. Put my default gateway in. And DNS servers, uh, if you have any. DNS servers are important as VoIP Detective will attempt to phone home to VoIPDetective.com in order to receive updates and to validate his license. So it's, it's, it's important to have DNS servers and a functioning internet connection for VoIP Detective to work properly. So once we have everything in there, we're going to hit OK. We're going to back all the way out. Oh, we're going to set the host name. This is actually very important as well. So uh, the reason we set the host name is if you are accessing VoIP Detective uh, via its host name. Uh, so this would be um, VoIPDetective.YourCompany.com or, or CDRTracker.YourCompany.com. And we're going to quit. At this point, for these changes to take pace, place, we're going to need to reboot. So let's restart the virtual machine. Okay, we're back up and running. So now, let's go to VoIP Detective in our browser. Okay, we are first greeted by the EULA. So I'm going to accept this. The site URL should be the same thing that you're accessing it from in your browser. It's going to start with HTTP or HTTPS. And it's going to... And like that. So, uh, as you see here on the screen, you can access VoIP Detective via the IP address or 
What's actually preferred is accessing it via a DNS name. Uh, if you're going to use DNS names, which I would recommend, you would need to add an A record into your DNS server. But for this demo, we're just going to use the IP address. You need to put an admin email. This is the email address where VoIP Detective will send alerts and, uh, and, and issues and system status messages to. If your network requires a proxy, you can configure one here. In my environment, I do not. At this point, we're going to put the license key that we received during the license and download screen. So let's switch back to my account and we can see my license key is right here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it right here. And we're going to activate an online license. Let's go ahead and check and make sure everything looks good. Uh, this is this is the step most people get caught up on if you do not have a functioning internet connection uh, and functioning DNS servers. This license won't be able to activate. But I think we're okay. So, all right. So we've successfully activated this. Uh, in my environment, I use five digit extensions. That helps VoIP Detective tell what's an internal call and what's an external call. Uh, for Voicemail Pilot, put in the primary Voicemail Pilot. Uh, this can be found in your call manager installation. Uh, so I'm going to hit go. At this point, we've configured the VoIP Detective appliance. Uh, we have not addressed call manager. And at this point, you would log into your call manager and you would add VoIP Detective as a billing server. Uh, this is pretty straightforward. There's, there's no real, uh, th these are all built in processes inside of call manager. Uh, and this guide will walk you through that. And at the end of this, at the end of this guide, you should have a uh, call manager sending CDR and CMR files to VoIP Detective. So once that's done, we can hit complete setup and we're done. Uh, you can log into VoIP Detective using the default administrator credentials, which is admin and VoIP, V-O-I-P. And that's it. We've successfully installed VoIP Detective.